rise for prayer before I uh, invite Daniel up, or you can come up now as well, either way. Are you going to be using, uh, you want to have the podium here? Are you going to no, be plugging? Right here. Okay, yeah. you're good with that. I didn't know mm -hmm. if you were plugging something in. Okay, let's all bow in prayer. Uh, dear God, come to you uh, mm -hmm. this morning. Uh, we're asking you for uh, your presence here. We thank you for the spirit that abides in our hearts. We, uh, we ask that you be with Brother Daniel as he stands and speaks to us this morning. Mm -hmm. And brings your word to us. Bless him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. All right. Good morning. God is good. All right. And all the time. God is good. All right. If I can just get that thing to plug in there. While you do that, I'll do this. Well, as you heard, my name is Daniel Pollard. My wife, June, is somewhere. Where is she at? Oh, she's right there in the back. And we've been married for... Hmm. Oh, next year will be 50 years. So, I don't know, this would be what, 40? Good, somebody can talk in church. Good, good. It's allowed. Talking in church is okay. Okay. So, we've been married for 49 years. have seven children. The very first one went to be with the Lord, and we have six, uh, four married, two at home, seven grandchildren. And the most important thing is I'm born again. Jesus Christ saw beyond my faults and saw my needs. And uh, if you thought it was for you, no, he sent his son for me. Oh, for you also. But he sent his son for me so that I can be saved. It wasn't by my works, it was by what Jesus Christ have done. So, um, I, I'm not here to talk about ministry, although we'll have a little clip on, on ministry at the end. I believe Sunday morning is to bring the word of God. So, I will uh, share with you. Heard a lot of good things of fathers this morning. And... Um, just want to kind of piggyback on that and share a little bit about fathers. So if, if we can get this going somehow. Man, I think I have a little height with me here. Is, is that what we do here? Okay. And then. Oh, good. I love it in my face. And you, you, you would think that I'm, I'm in the presence of the Lord, you know, beaming like, like, like Moses. Right? All right, so whenever you're ready, hook me up there. Let me know you're on there. And I would like to share with you a little video clip. And where is it? Oh, let it warm up. Okay. Anyway, um, some of you know that I lived in New York City for... Uh, total around 24 years, lived in New York City. We did uh, group ministries in New York. I'm from a small island in the Caribbean called Trinidad and Tobago. Two islands, one country. Moved to New York City about uh, 35 years ago for the nightlife, the drugs, the women, all the things that the flesh feels satisfied with. But in a city of 9 million people, God, on one cold Thursday night, reached out and touched my heart and changed my life. But it took seven years of my wife praying and fasting and seeking the face of God so that God can turn my heart to face him. So this morning I want to share with you about a father's love, how great a father's love. Do you know that song, How Great a Father's Love? Okay, so if, if we, at the end we can sing that, it would be great. Don't ask me to start the song or we wouldn't finish. All right, so my volume is up. Everything is ready to go.
Yes, Mr. Sharon, do you agree? Now let me see. I was going to do it a little before, but then I saw your attendance today and the staff attendance. I'm just going out. You know what? See if you get any sound out of it, you know. Well, it wouldn't play the sound, but oh, it's a cool. So, anyway. Could you just run it straight from, from there? Would it play the sound? If you run the if you run the video, it's a it's a it's a YouTube video. And here's another thing I can do. There is always a um. It's Derek uh, Derek Derek Redman. See what I'll do here. I know what I'll do. I'll trick him. I'll trick him. Don't worry. One second, and I'll get it to you. I'll get it to you. stop and race at the same time the triple crown awarded three row kia olympic stadium in barcelona coming up to the men uh, here we go
Father, with a love that is so strong, you can turn it off now. A father that cares. A father that wants to see you finish the race. I don't know for you, I didn't have a father that showed a lot of love and care, an earthly father. And I didn't know what it was like to be the kind of father that our Heavenly Father is. Do you know? I have a new father. I have a father that came and showed his love and his care and his compassion towards me. I want to talk about that kind of father today. Today, we many celebrate Father's Day and And there are some that never had the love of a father. Some will look at fathers and then they think of a father in heaven and they equate it the same. That the earthly father is like the heavenly father, but he's not. If you have your Bible with you, I'd like you to open it up. To Hebrew, uh, sorry, to, uh, let's start with Luke the... 15th chapter, talks about a father, and you would have heard this story before, but I want to share it with you again today. 
as we look at a father's love, the love of a father. Luke 15, starting at verse 11. And the story goes, and he said, he said, a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, give me the portion of goods that's fallen to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance on righteous living. Let's stop there for a little bit and... Think about this. Two sons. The younger one saw the life of New York City, living in a farm somewhere here in Pennsylvania. And goes to the father and says, hey, I want my portion now. I'm not going to wait till you die. It's a matter of disrespect right there. I just want it now. And we live in a world today where it's now and it's all about me has nothing to do with you or God. It's all about me. People walk around and say, it's my body. I have the choice to do whatever I want. But if you look in Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1, God had a plan for Jeremiah's life, and God, the Heavenly Father, said to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, while you were yet in the womb, before you were formed, before you came out of the womb, I have known you. I have chosen you. I have called you to be my prophet in all the nations. When does life begin? Whose choice is it? It is not a, some blood or some thing. It's a, it's a person. Because God said to, said to Jeremiah, while you were yet in the womb, I have known you. It's not a choice, it's a child. But in today's world, I can, you know, it's all about me. It's all about me. This young man is all about me. I, this is what I want. This is going to make me happy. Many of us in the church that say, God wants me to be happy. I'd love for you to show me that verse. God says, I want you to be holy. In your holiness, you'll find happiness. In your holiness, you'll find happiness. But it's all about me. See, I hear of all the things in New York City, the bright lights and the, the women and the drugs, and, and I'm tired of being on this stink farm in Pennsylvania, sitting with my father. And the Bible says, he went to his father and says, give me my portion. And the, portion, the father could have debated with him, just like our heavenly father. There are times we ask God for things, and he says, no. Or he says, wait. We're not going to wait. Abraham didn't wait. God says, Abraham, I'll give you a son. And Abraham couldn't wait for the son that God had. He listened between him, him and his wife. They had their own way of doing things. And today we still suffer with a war between two people, the Jews and the Muslims. Just can't wait. I want it and I want it now. <laughs> we were just, uh, where were we? We were someplace. Oh, we were, my wife and I went out to eat, and uh, we she swiped the debit card or the, the credit card, uh, and it, was t it took about a good 10 seconds. And she's like, how long is this going to take? And then I had a reminder, my first computer, when I have to download a photo, it took me seven minutes for one picture to be downloaded. Sometimes I fell asleep and wake up, and it's still downloading. But we live in a world today where it's now, and I want it now. I'm not going to wait. Because God wants me to be happy. And God calls me to be holy. That's what he calls me to. 
So what do we do? We find our own ways. Let me give you a quick story. Last year, July, I had planned to go to Kenya. We've been going to Kenya for the last uh, 10 years. But in the last two years, God has called us to a village that is way out in the boonies. There's no road. There's no water. There's no lights. There's no Amish. I mean, there's, there's people there that don't even know the Lord. They hear about this God. They don't know who he is. And, and, and the God took us there two years ago, November of 2022, and laid heavy on our hearts uh, the, for these people. But it took a long time of work and pray and sacrifice. So last year, July, I was going back to Kenya where we were opening up the second school that God had provided for the children in that village where they had never been to school. The adults have never been to school. You could tell them the Bible, but they can't read it. I'm getting ready to go, and then I got an infection. Well, two infections in both toes. See these, these two toes here? This one is infected. This one is infected. With diabetes, neuropathy, things like that happens. So I went to the doctor, the hospital. They put me in the hospital, and they said, well, you know what? The quickest thing to do, the fastest thing to do, and the best thing to do is to just chop them off, cut them off. Get the big sledge and, or the big blade or whatever it is, or they do it, or the axe or jigsaw or whatever, just, ch just ch cut it off. That's the world we live in today. It, it just, just cut it off. You see, the marriage is not working because I don't love him like I used to. I don't love her like I used to. I don't respect him anymore. So the quickest thing and the easiest thing is to do get divorced. Find someone else. It's all about me. It's all about me. Fathers deserting their children. It's all about me. I want to be happy. I want to be free. And the doctor said, cut them off. And I said, let me pray about it. And I prayed. And, and I sensed in my spirit, God is saying, trust me. Trust me, I got this. And then I heard a song playing that says, no matter what comes my way, you are still God. And the doctor is not God. It is by faith and not by what you see. I mean, I saw the toes. They look like, I mean, it, it, the infection went all the way to almost like here in the toe. So they got to knock the toe off or maybe they'll knock the whole leg off. After a while. Matter of fact, one doctor told me, we may have to take the leg off. I said, you're not going to touch any leg. You're not going to touch the toe. Just leave it alone. Okay. So they said, okay, well, you know what we can do? We can put you in this gas chamber. No, I mean oxygen chamber. Well, they kind of lock you in there like a... And I'm, I got locked in one time in the freezer, one of them walk-in freezer. And since then, don't lock the door. You lock the door, man, I'm, I get crazy. In elevators, pray it never happened where the elevator got shut down somewhere in the middle. If I go in the bathroom and the door closes and I try to open it and it does open at the same time, I might break the door down. And you want to put me in this chamber and lock it? I got to sit laying there for, what is it, two hours? 90 minutes or something like that. And then I got to take antibiotics every day. And I can't go to Kenya. And I asked God, God, is that, is that you? And I just sensed in my spirit. I didn't hear an audible word from him, but in my spirit, I felt he was saying, no, trust me. So I went to five doctors, orthopedic, podiatrist, um, infectious disease, and um, the one that takes care, what do you call it? Um, check your blood circulation, and my PCP. Five doctors with about a hundred years of experience told me there's only one way. The easiest way and the best way, just cut it off. And I said, five doctors says, no, you can't go to Kenya. And one God says, yes, you can go. Which one should I listen to? Did I speak a language you didn't understand there? 
Five doctors says no, and one God said yes. Who should I listen to? It's very simple. So I told him, God says, hey, go. He said, if you go, you may come back, and we have to cut the leg off. I said, okay, if that's what you think. But I know my God. I know I've had all kinds of sicknesses, and there was times I got healing. There was times he said, my grace is sufficient. And I told him, I'm, not going, to, I'm, I'm going to Kenya. I got my tickets. I'm, I'm going. And I had to go to Canada also. I'm going. And just about a week before I had to go, they, they said, you know what? Shoot, we, we, we're going to go in and take a piece of the bone out and send a test, and you'll see how bad it is. And on a Sunday morning, just like this, I get a report back. There's no infection. Monday morning, I went to the doctor and I said, hey, did you see the report? She said, yeah. I said, what happened? She said, well, I don't know. I said, I'll tell you what happened. Do you believe in miracles? She said, well, I believe in science. I said, good, because God created science. I said, it's a, it's a miracle. God healed it. As a matter of fact, I'll pray for you. I'll pray with you. And I went to all the doctors and I told them, I said, look at evidence. See, the easiest way is to cut it off. The easiest way is I want it now. The young man wanted what the things he wanted and he wanted it now. And what did the father do? The father gave it to him. If you insist, God is going to let you have it. But then you'll come right back. So the son took, uh, took all, his, all the stuff and he, he went to the big city. Here he is in New York City driving maybe a red Ferrari. I don't know what he drove. No, no, that was back then. They didn't have cars back then. Sorry. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Well, let's leave that alone. But when he had spent all, say all, when he spent all, when all that he had, all the money that he thought could keep him, was done, all the friends were gone. They call them what? Fair weather friends? They come when they could get, uh, you know, as soon as things get dry, they, they keep going to another place. All the friends were gone. All the women were gone. Everything were gone. And he began to be in want, in need. You see, I have a God that sticks closer than a brother. That when everybody else leaves, that's the father that we have. A father that stands by you no matter what. No matter what you have done, what you have gone through, he's a father that loves you. You know what? In Deuteronomy, God says, my love for you is an everlasting love. How long is everlasting? How long is everlasting? See, if God says his love is everlasting, it's forever. But you know, hmm. in Isaiah, he says, your sins have separated you from me. So it has nothing to do with God. We walked away from the shelter, and now we get wet in the rain. God is the one. My Father that's in heaven. And now he's in want, and now he's, he has a need. And verse 15, and where he went and joined himself to a citizen of the country, and he sent him to the fields to feed the swine. When you get to the bottom of the pit, when you get to the place where now God is going to have to really do something on you here, you have to turn to him. If that's the only way, the father. But the father loves him so much. that The Bible tells us that while he was in the swine and the pig pen, the Bible says he, he remembered at home, the father's house. He remembered what it was like at home. Many of us have run away from the presence of God and the presence of God's people, God's family, the church. And think the world, the world is what habit. I've been out there. I'm telling you, when I first started preaching, I was fire and brimstone. Because when I saw Christian crossing over to where I came from, I was mad. But I had to come to the place to realize it's only because of God's grace. And the same grace he gave to me, he'll give to those who are running away from him. 
And I have to love them like he loved them, even though sometimes it's impossible. Because it's impossible sometimes for me to love my own self for the things that I have done. And, and the Bible tells us he ended up in the pig pen all this time. What were the fathers doing? What were the father doing? I believe he was home praying and looking. He wasn't running after to see where's the son. Well, let's see what he's doing. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, okay. Yep, yep. No, he's running out of money now. He's going to come back. No, he just stayed at home. That's my feelings. That he just stayed and prayed and wait for that son. A challenge for us fathers to pray for that son, that prodigal son or prodigal daughter that has left the fold. You run after them and tell them you must come back. You have to come back. You try to put obstacles in their ways and try to find you know, somebody. Want to, they want to borrow some money from someone. You say, don't lend it to them. And, and you try to block so that they could come back. Leave it to God. And I believe the father prayed. And he prayed and he seeked the face of God. And the son said, you know, my father have all these things, even his servants. Have enough food to eat. Because you know there's provisions in God's house. In the place God wants you to be, there's provision. I always wanted to travel. I love traveling. And for 20 years, I couldn't travel. It's another long story. But in 10 years, God has taken me to places I never thought I would have been. It's all God. I never even had a secondary education. And yet God was able to use me. Because I didn't have the ability, but I was available. To share the gospel. To different people in different places, in different parts of the world. That's my father. There's provision in his house. There's healing in the house. There's deliverance in the house. In the presence of God, there is hope. Because he's a good, good father. That's who he is. He's a good, good father. And I'm loved by him. And the Bible tells us that he, he's there thinking, and now he says, I'm going to go home, and I'm going to tell my father, I'm sorry, I repent, I did wrong. And now he's going home with a repentant spirit. And you know the story, so the Bible says the father seemed from afar. Because he was looking. He's looking for you. Even when you think he doesn't care, he loves you. Even when you're crying in the darkness of the night, he's there. Because Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you till the end. He don't lie. He's not a man that he can lie. Yes, he was part man, part God, but he was God all the way too. And from alone with the father see the son coming, and the father broke the rule. You never see an old Jewish man running. But when he saw his son coming home, he didn't care what anybody thought. He didn't care what it looked like. He didn't care what the neighbors will say. Oh, here comes that prodigal son, and the father is going to meet him. Instead, the father should go and beat him. The son. What do you think of the father you have in heaven that is waiting just to embrace you? Sometimes you don't feel it. Sometimes you feel like an orphan. But you're not. You're his child. I'm his child. And the father says, they say he ran and he, and he put his arm around his son. It didn't matter. The smell didn't matter. I'll tell you a quick story if I get a chance here. Jim Simbala. Simbala? Anybody know who that is? From um, Times Square Church? No, from Brooklyn Tabernacle. He shared a story one time that really fascinates me. He shared a story of uh, Easter Sunday and he came and the place was crowded and packed with people and, and he was preaching, oh you sweating and he was preaching the word and, ah, then he had an altar call and people were coming to the altar 
And then he sat on the side of the stage and he loosened his tie. And, and while he was sitting in the corner of his eye, he can see this man coming, looking all disheveled and di you know, dirty. And, and the, the closer he come, the smell was very strong. and It wasn't a good smell. And he says, the man was keep coming, keep coming, and he wanted. He was looking at him from the side of the eye, and, and then the guy came right up in front of him. And he said, I could hardly breathe with the smell. It was a homeless man, didn't have any place to sleep, and sleeping in places. And he said, oh, I couldn't breathe. And, and then he said, you know what? I, I need to get rid of this guy. So I, he said, listen. And he went into his bill full, and he got $10. And he said, here, go buy something to eat. And the guy said, I don't want your money. I want that Jesus you were telling me about, you were talking about. He said, and all of a sudden, when he heard those words, he melted. God just hit him so hard in his heart. He was preaching about the love of God. And now a man came. He said he started weeping. And he held onto the man, and the man started weeping. The both of them started weeping, and the smell was gone. The man didn't smell the way he was before because God was right there. The father was there. And he said they wept and they wept. And he cried and he said, I'm sorry, God. And then he said, the man started coming to church. He invited him for Thanksgiving. And the man ended up being one of the ministers in one of the churches. Because someone was willing to let the pride and the things of the world prevent them from smelling the smell that God wants them to, that sweet aroma. You know, we were in, we were in uh, um, Nairobi, Kenya one time. We went to this place, a shelter, uh, sh uh, place to preach and share some meal. And, and when we walk in the place, I mean, it smelled. I mean, most of the young people hadn't showered for months. And they were just in there. And as I was there, when the worship starts going, the smell starts moving out the room. And the prison worship was just going, and they were singing. And, and then all of a sudden, I was getting ready to preach, and I couldn't get the smell anymore. Because God was there in the presence. And he took away the thing that was blocking us. And he hugged his son, and he took him. And you know the rest of the story. Didn't tell him, go clean up first before I hug you. But he hugged him and he said, put some sandals on his feet, shoes. Give him the ring, the segment of authority. See, he wanted to be a servant. No, no, you're my son. You are not God's servant. You're his son. You're his daughter. Yes, you would serve him. But he looks and he said, my child. My wife just reminded me, we just came back last night. Yesterday we were in. In uh, Indianapolis Women's Prison, they have 675 women. Many, some of them have babies in the prison. It's a maximum security prison. And while I was there, I was sharing with these women a, a story about the love of God and how much he cares about them. And, and I was sharing in them that, you know, with God, we, we, we see things the way the world sees it. Many of us, we see it for the now. God sees it for the then. And, and as I was sharing, there was a Muslim lady right in the front. I didn't even know why she came. We were doing hamburgers, hot dogs, fry pies, sodas, and coleslaw and stuff. Oh, the whole prison got fed physical food. And, and then right out in the open, they had the chairs out in the open. And I was out in the open preaching. And we do that every year. For the last nine years, a ministry called Stepping Stones in Southern Indiana. And as I look at these ladies, I wonder sometimes, wh why are they there? Many of them never had the love of a father. Never, many of them were looking for men to, be, to take the place of their father. And I told them yesterday, I said, you have a heavenly father that loves you so much. That he saw beyond your force and he saw your needs. And today, 
He's saying to you, you are my daughter, you are my child. And I shared him with the story of the woman with the issue of blood. Remember that story, the woman with the issue of blood, the, Samar the Samaritan woman? Well, they never even told her what kind of woman it was. I just feeling that she wasn't one of those. But they just told her it was a certain woman. But anyway, I told him at the end of the story, Jesus says, my daughter, your faith has made you well. My, your, my daughter, call her his daughter. So today, I just want to encourage you to think of the father's love. Had a big party for his son, and we could go into the story of the second son, but that's a whole message by itself. Because sometimes you may feel like the prodigal son. You went away, and, you've be, and then sometimes you feel like the son at home. Yeah, the father is there, but you, you don't have the relationship with him. But you're there. You're there. Sometimes you're with the wrong spirit. And this morning, I want to encourage us. Dads, stand strong. Remember, you have a heavenly father also. You have a father. And be to your children and your wives godly fathers. We're looking for a godly father. God wants godly fathers that could represent him. In closing, I want to share with you a, a group of people that has, if you want to hook me up here again, we'll go again for it. Yeah, if you want to turn the projector on then. And I want to share with you a, a group of people that many of them have no fathers. I would say someone talked about in Russia. We're talking about people has no fathers. As a matter of fact, in their tradition, some of them could father two and three children from with different wives. They don't understand what it means to be a father. Uh, when when uh, we we did a ladies and a men um, conference in that village uh, two years ago, a year and a half ago. And uh, when for time for the food, I said, okay, for the meal, the ladies came and the men came. And I said, ladies, go first. And that was never heard before. The men always go first for food. The men eat first, then the women, and if there's any left, the children gets. And then we're talking about what it means to be a man, what it means to be a father. <clears throat> Let me know when you get it. Oh, I'm going to see that light come up first. And so I'd like to share with you a group of people that I'd like for you to, to pray. Because uh, I wonder, this, this, they don't even know what Father's Day is because they don't have Father's Day. They just live one day at a time. And God has placed uh, CAM, Christian Ministry, together with us and some others to be the light to those that are living in darkness. Voice to those who cannot. 
is more than you'll bring. If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain, here's a place for people like you. If you stand up for those down on the knees, I lend a voice to those who cannot speak. Shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way. There's a place for people like you. Our pearls and the streets are made of gold. And when you get there, Matter of fact, when we went there in 2022 of November, not even two full years, we went into the village and realized there was one man for the last two years had been sleeping in the village there and just sharing about this God. And we went in, you had to go in with motorbikes or four wheelers and, and met with these people. And I remember preaching a, a message on John 3, 16, for God so loved. And I talked about God, the Heavenly Father. What is love? We go back to the video that I first started with, the love of a father, a father seeing a son in pain, a father seeing a, fa a son. And he went to the son, he told him, he said, you don't have to do this, you don't have to finish it, the race was over. The race is over. But the son wanted to finish. And in closing today, finishing the race. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners against himself, Least you be wearied and faint in your mind. Let us run the race to finish. Fathers, mothers, children. It's not about how fast you can go, but it's to finish the race. That young man wanted to finish the race. And yes, in a race, sometimes there are difficulties. And I could imagine the pain he had. I mean, when you pull something like that in your leg, and he was trying to hobble to go, but he just wanted to finish. And he tell us all the people stood up and just clapped for him because he finished the race. He may have won the, the medal, but he won the hearts of many people. <coughs> You're here today, and I don't know if you really know what the Father's love is. Let's sing that song as we stand. How deep the Father's love. Someone has started. And, and you're here today, and if you don't, Really know the Father. This is a day to know Him. He's not like, the, like your, your earthly father. You may have, have a good father, the good, but He's better than any father could ever be. He's not the Father of the year. He's the Father of everything. And you do not know Him. Today is the day. Or maybe you're here and you'll discourage. You feel the Father has left, or you feel the Father because of. Some of the things you may have done in the past because maybe you were a prodigal or maybe you were a son at home but you didn't have a good heart. But he, he forgives and he loves and he cares. How deep the Father's love. Let's sing that song. How deep the Father's love
Let us pray. Oh, God, our Father, we give you thanks that you are a good, good Father. As we celebrate this time, where some take a time just to give an extra celebration to fathers on this earth, we think of you, Lord, our Heavenly Father, has always been there for us. In the midnight hour, in the darkest time of our life, in the brightest time of our life, on the mountain top and in the valley, you've always been there. And even when we run away, like that Father, you're waiting with open arms for us to come back. When we come back and we repent, Lord God, you're willing to forgive us for every sin that we have committed. Nothing is too big for you. Father, there may be one today that the father they had or maybe didn't have a father. I pray, God, that you will continue to be the Heavenly Father for them. Because you said you are the father to the fatherless. There are some, oh God, who were fathers, who were good fathers, Lord. I pray, Lord, and thank you for those fathers that showed love and care for their children and was able to direct their children to the Heavenly Father. We live in a world today where fathers are not regarded or respected anymore. And fathers don't take the responsibility they should be taking. But I thank you, Lord God, that you have never leave us. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated, and I know he's going to come and close, but I just want to tell you, uh, we could have gone on for a long time because uh, I was told that, you know, go as long as the Spirit leads, you know, just, uh, and we have food. We don't have to go home and turn the crock pot on or off. We have food, and there's some Caribbean food. I want to first thank the church here. You have been a great support and help for us in the ministry since we moved to Ohio. God has opened up that, play, that, that door for us in Kenya, and that's one of our main ministry. We still do marriage retreats and travel. Uh, matter of fact, I leave here today. I'm going to Reading, Pennsylvania, where we're going to have, uh, uh, from tonight, uh, Bible school. I'm teaching the adult class every night from now until Thursday. And then Saturday, we'll be down in southern Indiana. So we do a lot of traveling. And then on the 20th of this month, I'm going back to Kenya for two things. One is... Uh, we have um, the teachers in one of our schools. We have 340 uh, teachers and all uh, <laughs> students, but all we had was two teachers. And then God raised up two more, and then we get two more. So we have six teachers. But the teacher, teachers had to sleep in the classroom because you can't just go in and out of there. It's too far. There's no, no way to get in and out. So they slept in the classroom and the storeroom. And God provided just this last year funds so we could build a place. The last picture you saw, that was a, a apartments for the, the, the teachers, a little bedroom with a bed and a, a table and two chairs. So the teachers, teachers have a place to sleep now. I'm going to, we're doing the opening ceremony. And then also with Christian Aid, for the very first time, we're going into the village with doctors and nurses. We're doing the spiritual and the physical, mental, emotional Every day we're expecting around 500 people to come out. After that, after 500, we'll close the gate. And uh, many of the doctors are volunteering their time from Kenya. And Christian Aid is helping by buying the supplies for the medicine, the dewormers, and different things that is needed, Check, checking for blood pressure, and all what we're doing. We'll be doing it for three days in three villages. Uh, so pray for us as we go. We have a team that is leaving the U.S., some from SMBI, some from the uh, EBI, the was a part of EBI with a guy named Marvin, Marvin Troyer and his wife, and a team of us is going, and plus a team from Kenya that works with CAM. So pray for us as we go from the 28th, I'll be gone, and then I come back on the 8th, and then on the 9th, I'll be back down in Pennsylvania again for uh, Open Gates, just fly straight from there, and then I go to Open Gates for the week, and the next week, Open Gates in Detroit. So it's a lot that God has really opened doors for us, in ministry. Thank you so much for your prayer. Thank you for your support. We really appreciate this church. And when I knew I was coming through here, we drove last night from, uh, from Indianapolis and we stopped off somewhere on the road and then came here this morning and that we could be here. Thanks for allowing me to come. I know to just call and ask and yeah, sure, come on over. Really appreciate the open door you have. And some of you may have known me in the past. 
we had revival meetings here and different things like that. God bless you and thank you so much. Come on up. And technology is something, right? You got to get above it. Thank you, Daniel, for your uh, truth from the word for our souls, our spirits. So I was thinking you, you give us the uh, give us the food for our souls and our spirits, and then you uh, go down and make us some food for our bodies. We that's get, why I do that. That's we get I'm hungry. So you can't say you're going home hungry. <laughs> that's right. You must be fed somewhere, yeah. spiritually or physically. We need both to live. To live, right? Yes. Need both to live. Appreciate that. I appreciate what you shared. Challenge to. Uh, Two fathers, first of all, and and the love from the father. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I believe we'll stand. We'll stand now, and we will uh, ask a blessing on the noon meal. All right, and then we'll head. And I would ask if you're a visitor, go go down first. Uh, let the visitors go through the line first. And like Daniel said, the food committee and him, they like everybody promptly go down so we can visit down there. So let's, uh, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for this day of rest, this opportunity we could come together and we could hear the truth from your word. We thank you for the loving Father that you are to each one of us as your children. We pray now that uh, as there's been food prepared, blessings from you, I pray that we would uh, be thankful. We thank you for these provisions and um, bless them to our bodies. Let's all pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is 